Eight miles north from the loop, industrial buildings, Victorian homes, and small businesses line Ravenswood streets. Once a manufacturing hub, the neighborhood is now known for its breweries and rich arts community. WTTW reporter Nick Blumberg and producer Marissa Nelson spent the day reporting there as part of our Chicago Tonight in Your Neighborhood series. And Nick joins us now from inside a local craft brewery. Nick. That's right, Brandis. We're here at Urban Brew Labs. Thanks very much to them for hosting us so that we're not out in a possible rainstorm. Now, for the last three years, they've been brewing up everything from IPAs to sours to black lagers. And later this month, they're set to open a tap room. Co-founder James Moriarty says that's a lifelong dream of his. And he says his fellow brewers and neighbors really helped make it happen. Urban Brew Lab sits near the north end of one of Ravenswood's big attractions. It's a mile and a half stretch with about 10 breweries and a distillery known as Malt Row. Especially in the summer, instead of people bar hopping, we get people brewery hopping. And, um, you know, and, and because the chamber has done a great job of promoting the area, it's become an attraction. So we feed off of everyone else's success and, you know, and now with the tap room, hope to be able to contribute a little more to the neighborhood. Now Ravenswood's also known for its thriving art scene, including Chicago Glass Collective, which founder Leslie Spiker opened in 2012. It offers a variety of classes, which are starting back up next week, and it's a workspace for artists like Chitra Punjabi, who's been a member for two years. She got interested in glass art on a trip to Venice as a teen, and she says if it seems intimidating to you, the collective is really a great place to get started. I feel like we're a space where we can meet people where they're at and there's always something for everyone. Um, and there's such a community here at the collective, which is one of the things I love about being a member and part of this space. The members here are always sharing ideas with each other. We just have really great community here. And I think that's the biggest selling point on top of being able to do some really creative, cool stuff. Now, just down the road from the Glass Collective is Bosley's Backyard, a private indoor dog play space rentable by the half hour. It's named after owner Kim Theobald's pup. Bosley's is meant for dogs who don't do so well at the dog park or for a couple of canine pals to get together or for training. And it's designed for both physical and cognitive stimulus. I think it's just really um, important to try different things with your dog and introduce them to new environments, um, showing them different activities and, you know, like when they, they get it and, you know, you're doing a positive reinforcement and you reward them for it, um, it just really builds their confidence and gives them self-control and, you know, it's really important for you to work on that communication with you and your dog. Now, Bosley's is a new business. After some pop-ups last year, its permanent home in Ravenswood opened up in May. It's one of many small businesses, both new and old, in the area that are excited to welcome back customers, but they're also very aware that while the pandemic has eased, it has not ended. Costs for their supplies are double and triple what they were a year and a half ago. They're running at half staff and paying those folks that are there overtime. So. It's, uh, it's an exciting time, but still uh, a bit of a hectic one. Uh, and so we're really excited at the grace that residents have shown our businesses. Now, the Chamber's also been involved in an effort to rethink some of Ravenswood's public spaces, carving out so-called people spaces, with everything from outdoor seating to artwork to spots for concerts. While it's a neighborhood that's easy to get around, Wagendorf says it doesn't have large gathering spaces like neighboring Lincoln Square or North Center. When you look at our geography, there's not a good location for one. So um, after about five years of beating our head against the wall with this problem, we decided to create a bunch of small people spaces that are all going to have some art architectural and art artistic elements uh, that connect them, but they'll all be different and kind of fit their specific corridors. Now, in addition to reusing public space, this neighborhood's also seeing the redevelopment of the long vacant building that formerly housed Ravenswood Hospital. In partnership with the Chicago Housing Authority, it's been turned into affordable housing for seniors, independent living for folks 55 and up with the option to move into assisted living as residents age and their needs change. For the low income population in Chicago, the options really are as you get to be too old and frail to be in your own apartment, you're really looking at going into a nursing home. And this facility provides a better option. It, it allows people to move kind of seamlessly within the same facility from being in their own apartment to being still in their own apartment, but in their own apartment with a higher level of care. 
Now, Chicago Housing Authority CEO Tracy Scott says this combination of services is the first project of its kind in the state and could be a model for future efforts. Scott also says a vacant building getting new life is good for the fabric of the neighborhood. That's the only way that you can have decent, safe, and affordable housing is, is truly to have strong communities. So we have to be concerned with not only the housing itself, but what's in the community, the green space, uh, services, health care, food, all of those, and, and, of, and I, I shouldn't forget, because we're talking about senior living, but schools are critical for strong communities. Now, coming up, we'll hear from one of Ravenswood's aldermen with a bit more on that new senior housing, as well as public space, the police contract, and the upcoming ward remat process. But for now, Brandis, back to you. All right, Nick, thanks. We'll see you in just a bit.